Okay, so I don't know why it says 1015. I don't know. But uh, those of you that weren't there, uh, didn't come before we started the video, we were watching that because our argumentative essay this week is going to be about um, what pet you think is the best. So you're arguing about which pet you think is the best one to have and to own. So we watched a little video to get us in the mindset of some animals. And what we're going to do is head over to Google Classroom and open up this argumentative essay graphic organizer. Okay, this is how we're going to organize our essay and how we're going to get our ideas out. This is not where we do our final draft. Okay, this is just an outline to help us get our thoughts out. So let's go ahead and get that open. Um, a lot of this is going to be on you. I'm going to guide you guys through it and we're going to talk about the different parts, but we spent all last week going over argumentative essays. Um, this template should look familiar. It's what we did on Friday, but it has a different prompt at the top in blue instead of what we did on Friday. So it's the same set of slides. And we're going to go ahead and start with that. So go ahead and get it open. Zoom into 100. And once you're there, just sit tight. I'm going to check the guardian, check my attendance really quick while you guys get that opened up. Okay, it looks like some of you guys are getting there. Most of you guys have it open. Okay, so go ahead and get those Google Slides open. Argumentative. Did I, what are they? Basically, yeah. Argumentative essay, graphic organizer. I'll give you guys another 30 seconds to go ahead and get that open, and then we're going to kind of get started. While you're waiting, um, be thinking about what pet you think is the best. That's our next step, deciding what our opinion is going to be, what's our claim. All right, so. We, um, step number one says decide what you think, and it says consider what you read in the article. We didn't read an article, but we have a concept already of what a pet is and why we might think that one is the best. So we're not going to read an article to go with this. There's no point in doing that. We need to, in that first part, step number one, write down what pest, pest, <laughs> what pet do you think is best? So which that is the best. And let's go ahead. Um, actually, not yet. Um, and I don't need complete sentences yet because you guys are going to be writing a whole essay about this. This is just to get your thoughts out. So, I mean, this is a graded section of it because it's your pre-writing and you're planning what you're going to write. So I'm going to take a grade for this part. And then tomorrow, mm, probably tomorrow, you guys will start writing the rough draft. Um, I'll probably give you tomorrow and Wednesday. And then maybe halfway through Wednesday, we'll do some editing. And then Thursday and Friday is finishing it all up. Okay. Um, so we're going to use this same prompt, which pet is the best, all week. This is what your essay is on. For today, though, we are just going to go through the pre-writing and planning out your essay. So step number one, which pet is the best? So I'll give you guys... Two minutes. You should be writing down in that section, a dog is the best pet, a cat, a mouse, a hamster, I don't know, whatever you think is the best pet. Yeah. 
Honestly, whatever pet you choose is fine. You just need to be able to give me reasons why and support it. I'm not going to disagree with you. I mean, I might, but if you have a strong argument to back up your idea, then I'm okay with it. Okay, so for step number one, you should be typing out which pet is the best. Make sure you type out which one you think is the best. Doesn't need to be complete sentences yet. When we write our essay, are we allowed to copy and paste from this? Nope. Yeah. It's your own words, so yeah. Yoshi, what do you got? Okay. Oh, that's true. You could do snakes, lizards. When I was growing up, my cousin had an iguana. I don't know why I would think that that's the pet, the best pet, but a sneezing lizard. Hmm. The what? Yeah. Okay. Good. I'm seeing some of you guys getting down your idea of what you want to write about. Snakes, dogs, cats, hamster. I don't like that. No, thank you. Mm -mm. I mean, if you want to write about that, go for it. But. Okay. So our next step, this is the one where you're going to be doing a bit more thinking and I'm going to give you more time. So in the first step, you are just saying dog is the best. Cat is the best. You're just giving, you know, you're saying what you think. Step number two is where you list three ideas that, three reasons about why you think your animal, your pet is the best. So where it says number one, you're going to give me reason number one that your voice in pet is the best. So whatever you think your first reason is works for me. I'm gonna give you guys maybe no no more than that. On number two you are gonna be writing reason number two your choice is the best. Yeah, so where it says number two, you're writing down reason number two that your choice is the best. So you're giving me three reasons why your choice in pet is the best. So one, two, three. I still, that's not so sweet choice. You chose. Okay. So this is where I'm going to let you guys do a little bit of work and uh, be coming up with your reasons, okay? okay. I put directions in the chat too. I'm going to give you guys six minutes. It is 8.24. I'm going to give you until 8.30 at this point, and if we need more time, that's okay. But for now, be getting your ideas out, please.
this that you put right here didn't need to change you put your answer down there yeah and then you scroll down to step number two and give me three reasons why okay okay a couple more minutes remember your reasons don't need to be complete sentences right now they just need to be your ideas out on the paper slash computer Chameleons can be pets, yes. <laughs> Nobody wants a honey badger as a pet.
All right, so that was six minutes. Is that enough time? Do you guys need a little bit more? Looks like some of you guys are finishing up. All right, we're, I'm going to give you two more minutes. So be working for about two more minutes on this section. We're not in any rush, so if you're behind, that's okay. Just continue it after. Okay. <laughs> Would you like to see what? Well, actually, you can see what mine looks like. He's up there. I was gonna pull the picture, and then I was like, just kidding. That's him up there. Which one? The, oh, the black, black one. The black dog. Yeah. yeah. How does he look now? The same? Yeah, pretty much. A little bit fatter, but yeah. <laughs> These are blue healers. we're good um i'm gonna just explain the next part if you're still working on this part just keep going okay well you need to finish step number two still you got all three reasons okay step uh we're gonna move on to step number three now this is where you acknowledge the other side this is the counterclaim the opposite side of the argument now we know that there are tons of different pets. So you kind of need to decide which one people might say is better than yours. So let's say you decided to choose a hamster. What animal do you think people might say is better than a hamster? A dog. A dog. Know what? Well, no, a just dog. in general. A dog. What else? A dog. No. Oh, what pet? Like a Maybe a turtle. <laughs> Maybe a cat is better than a hamster. So people can come back and say a lot of different animals. You do not need to list every single animal that people might claim is better than a hamster or whatever you chose to do your essay on. Just choose one animal that might be better. So let's say you're writing about a cat and people are like cat haters, right? People either love cats or they hate them. So People could come back at you and be like, cats are the worst animal ever. What would you say back to them? Okay, so the, this other side, step three, is giving your counterclaim. Okay, choose one pet people might say is better than the one you chose. And so choose one pet that people might say might be better than the one that you chose. <laughs> No, we'll write the claim in the next part, like the official claim. Um, I would, just so that you're, you remember that this is the counterclaim section. So this is where you're going to choose one pet that people might say is better than yours. And then give reasons they might say that. Then respond again about why yours is better. Yeah, there's kind of three things that go with the counterclaim. You acknowledge the other person's side of the argument. You agree that they do have reasons why they might be right, but then you respond and say, no, nah, I'm still right. Okay? So that's basically... Do we, do we that right? Yes, you would give one reason that they might say, so let's say they chose cats, right? Or um, I chose to write about dogs. The counterclaim might be that cats are better. And I could say people think that cats are better because 
they're calmer and easier to take care of. And then the response that I could give as a dog lover could be, yeah, but dogs are better because we can go outside and have more fun with them. So something like that. Make a little bit of sense? Okay. So go ahead and be working on this section. I'll give you guys another five-ish minutes to work on this part. Remember to uh, finish up step number two if you need to, giving your three reasons. Okay. Huh? I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll give you guys some time to be working on this one. I 
Okay. 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 Let's see. A couple more minutes. Okay. I'm seeing some good work from some of you and some of you guys falling behind. We'll give you about two more minutes on this section and then we'll go look at our next one. Let's go ahead and look at our next part. Nice and quick part on this one. It says to craft your thesis, which is your central claim. So this is where you have your one statement that's like, I think blah, blah, blah is the best pet. It's just a quick one sentence that says, this is what I believe. Okay? Oh, is this not the counterclaim? Not the counterclaim. This is your claim. So your claim. Okay, if I could type. Okay. Uh, I'll even start it for you, like a sentence starter. I believe, if I could spell believe. There we go. I believe that. You don't have to. However you want to start it, you can. You don't have to, but I'm just kind of giving you guys the ideas. So I believe that. So this is just a one quick sentence that's your overall concept of your essay. I believe that dogs are the best pets. I what believe the best dogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like dogs a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is one sentence. I'll give you guys two minutes on this one. And I know we're going a little bit quick, but I want to get through this uh, outline so that we all have an idea of what needs to be done, and then you guys can just be working on it, too, okay? It's snowing out there. No, it's not. It's not snowing. But it's not anymore. Thank you. I can tell when someone walks in my classroom. Yeah. It'll be 45 degrees at 9 a.m. Uh, I don't know. We might go outside. We'll see. All right. About one more minute. Go ahead and get this claim stated, please. All right, so step number four is just your one sentence claim. What you think is the best pet? 
doesn't need to be a huge long sentence. It just needs to be clearly stated. The best pet is blank. Okay. So now we can go on to slide three. Slide number three talks about the very beginning of your essay. We didn't talk about this on Friday. So we're going to go a little bit more in depth on this part. Shiley, can you pick your head up? Yoshi, you too. Thank you, guys. It says, the very beginning of your essay is called the hook because it hooks in your reader's attention. The hook should relate to the topic of your essay, but can take many forms. It can be an anecdote, which is a very short story. It can be a fact, a quote, or a question. Choose one of the ideas below and you, or use your own idea and write the hook in the lines provided. It's usually one to three sentences that just kind of makes me want to read your essay. So if I read the beginning of an introduction paragraph and it says, dogs are the best, they are cute and fluffy. Does that make me want to read it? No, it sounds like a robot. It sounds like a robot. It's kind of boring. It doesn't really draw me in, right? You want to start off with a story about your favorite dog, maybe, or a surprising fact about cats. Something that really draws my attention and is like, oh, maybe I do want to read the rest of this essay. Because keep in mind, I have to read 24 of these. So you might want to get it a little bit exciting for me. Yes, I do have to read all of them. How else do you think they get graded? Yep. So one of the ways that you can start is an anecdote, which is a very fancy word for a short story. A little three to five sentence story that just gives a personal experience with a dog, a cat, a horse, a snake, whatever you're writing your story about or your essay about. You could also give me a surprising fact, um, a surprising fact that will maybe like make your make me since I'm reading it, make my eyebrows raise, or you could throw in some facts um, within the article that I'm like, oh, that's a cool one. I like that. Just something that gets my attention. Uh, you could also start with a rhetorical question, which is like a question that doesn't really have an answer. So like, do you like dogs? Most people will say, yes, I do. So <laughs> like things like that. So your hook is probably one of the hardest things to write because it's really how you get people's attention to read your essay. So I'm going to give you five minutes. I think this is pretty much all we're going to do. So let's take about five minutes. Uh, right, let's say, oh, whoa. How did that happen? It went away. What happened to it? I closed it somehow. Okay, well. Let's try this again. So for your hook, we're going to write two to four sentences that make me, the person reading your essay, want to keep reading your essay. And this doesn't have to be the most perfect thing yet. We are going to write a rough draft and do some editing. So you can just kind of give some ideas right now. Doesn't need to be perfect yet. Just needs to be there so that you have something to refer back to. Okay. So I'm going to give you guys a few minutes on this one. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, so um, let's go ahead and scroll down just a little bit more. If you're still with me, that's good. If you're not, that's fine too. I'm just going to keep going. Um, step six is to let readers know a little bit about the issue you're writing about. This is not your point of view, but a brief summary of the issue. Um, this would be useful if people like needed background information, like on maybe climate change or like politics and laws, but do people really need that much background on pets? No. Not really. So we are actually going to skip this section. Are we going to finish it right here? Um, we're pretty much done. I just want to go over the next slide. We don't really have to type anything on the next slide, though. So step number six, we're going to kind of skip because we don't really need it for this sort of argumentative essay. Okay. So. Step number seven is the actual writing of your essay, which is what you guys will start tomorrow, probably, if you're done. Um, it says, now that you have the key ingredients of your essay, you're ready to start writing. Use the following to help you organize your writing and some hints on what to add to your draft. So in your introduction paragraph, you want to open up with the hook, which was the step five that we just wrote. Then transition from something that relates to your hook into your claim and what your essay is going to be about, which is step number four. Again, skip step number six. We don't really need it. That's okay. Is, is the, are we doing that for our email? Yeah, we're going to keep going with this. Yep. And then our body paragraphs are what, um, where you write your supporting ideas from steps number two. So we wrote down three things in step number two that are your reasons why you think that the pet should be the best so for each one you need to have about three to five sentences per paragraph um, you want to make sure you have evidence so you can find statistics facts um, text evidence different things on the internet if you like do a little bit of research find some stuff to support your reason and you'll do that three times we go three different things You'll also make sure that you acknowledge the other side and say, okay, people might think that this pet is better than mine, but it's not, and give you an idea on that one. And then you also need to make sure you have a conclusion, which is about two to three sentences, 
to remind your readers about your main points and then finish with a strong sentence. Um, that's usually the call to action of like, go get a dog, they're the best things ever. Mm -hmm. Something along those lines, right? Mm -hmm. So this slide, slide number four, is kind of an outline of how you should write your essay from here. Not, uh, Alex, wake up. Not, uh, you don't need to write anything on this one, okay? So, you can turn it in if you want to. So what you need to make sure you finish today so that you're ready for tomorrow is step or slide number one, slide number two, and slide number three. So there's six step or five steps for you to finish. Step number six, you're skipping. And it's just kind of an outline, getting your ideas out. And then tomorrow we will start with the actual writing of the essay. Make sense? All good? Yep. Okay. Those of you that are online, um, that's actually all we have time for. So just make sure you finish those things.